blockchain, what it is, why it'll be valuable, why it'll be around for a long time. Um, you know, people start using, I call it a trick question. You sit down at a panel or you know, at some event and they say, you need to find blockchain. I go, oh, that's a trick question. It's a trick question because, yes, you know, everyone sits down there and they start saying, well, it's a distributed ledger technology, to blah, 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 and you put the transactions all together in a block and come together. But that doesn't actually do anything for anybody. Like when I was getting started and people would do that, I was like, so my marketing management brain, eyes just glassed over, you know, not paying attention to that. So I, I try and keep it really simple. I go, most people have an iPhone or an Android. I go, okay, blockchain is a platform, just like your iOS is a platform. And just like on your Apple phone, people build applications for it. You build applications for blockchain, exact same way. It's like you got, you know, three million applications that sit in the <laughs> Apple iTunes store. You can have just as many applications for blockchain that exist, that will exist at some point as well. And what people like about it is that it takes a Bitcoin, because it's the simplest and the one that people are most familiar with, uh, one, it's borderless, so you can move Bitcoin across borders without worrying about exchanging stuff. Uh, I use an example when I first started, I was like, uh, I have an account in Australia because I used to live in Australia. And I was like, how would I send a hundred bucks to myself from Australia to the US? Well, if I use my bank, I would send, I would try and figure out what the exchange rate was. I would send it probably about $135 Aussie. And then my Aussie bank would charge me $25 Aussie. And then my US receiving bank would charge me $25 intermediary fee. So I'd end up with about 50 bucks basically. And I said, okay, well, what if I stick it into my coin jar account, which I'd set up and connected to my Australian account, then sent the Bitcoin over to my Coinbase account, which I had set up and then pulled it out. And I was like, I got $99. And it took that long. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I can see that is valuable to people. So people like the fact that it's borderless. Uh, people like the fact that it's censorship resistant. You can't walk into Bitcoin Inc. and say, hey, I'm shutting you down, flipping off all the lights, and turning it off. Because it lives on tens of thousands of computers around the world, you gotta shut down all of them. So people really like that censorship resistance. Um, that's, I think, a big thing for those coming from that heavily libertarian ethos, you know, early on in the space. People like that it's peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning that there's no th third party. Everyone talks about that, no third party intermediary. Great, I can send you something, there's no bank in the middle, you know, taking a clip along the way. Um, this is big, I was in the ad tech space, and you know, the ad tech space, particularly mobile ads, it's all about taking a clip. There's a gazillion different folks and brokers and ad networks that are all taking a clip across everything that comes uh, in that space. So I think you see that space is right for blockchain technology, being able to not just disrupt, but just make the place more efficient, more transparent, um, saving people a lot of money. Uh, so people like, you know, those are some of the key things that people really like about blockchain technology. and. You don't have to, they don't have to all be wound up into the cryptocurrency side of it. You can imagine how these things can expand out to other areas where there are third parties in the middle of transactions that can be removed to make things more easy, uh, more transparent and save money. You know, you can imagine how, oh, okay, if I'm sending a bit of money, you know, oh, great. I'm not sending, you know, $10,000 every time. I might be sending small amounts of money. So I would utilize a cryptocurrency if it's going to save me on you know western union fees or whatever other bank fees are going to be used so these are ways that i talk about it when i talk to people because that i think they're just a bit more practical and go into like well these are the benefits of it rather than a bit of the features you know that make up a blockchain because ideally you never actually have to worry about that you know you don't worry about features that make up the internet when you send an email so